Hello everyone! In this video, I'm going to be talking a little bit about Genially. So recently in some of the ESL groups that I'm in, I've been seeing some talk about Genially, um, wanting to know how people use it and some of the benefits of using it with your students. And if you use any interactive curriculum that's out there like Learnaling, uh, Flip the Classroom, A Bridge Academy, all of those curriculums use Genially. So it's great to use for curriculum, but it's also a way to do some homework, interactive homework activities. And that's the way that I use it. So in this video, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the plans that are available, the options that you have, um, which one I chose and why. And then I'm going to talk a little bit about how I use it with my students. So first, let's take a look at the plans that are available. So there, of course, is a free plan, and I used the free plan for a few days just to test it out. And really, I could use the free plan, but there are some benefits to using one of the paid plans. Um, so if you look at their paid plan page, you'll see they have three paid versions, the student, the EDU Pro, and the master. So those curriculum creators out there like Learnaling, they're all using the master plan because they have a business. So they need that master plan. If you are just an individual teacher that just wants to use it with your students, you probably are not going to need that master plan. And you can see there's a big jump in price, $20.82 a month compared to the EDU Pro, which is just $4.99 a month, and the student, which is $1.25. So I'm going to show you what the big differences I think are between the student and EDU Pro, so why I chose the EDU Pro, and the big difference between the EDU Pro and the Master. So they have a list of some differences under them, but if you click on Show More, it gives you a great layout showing you what options there are and which plan they're available in. So all of them have the ability to create as many slide shows that you want, any creations that you want. There's no difference there. The big difference between the um, student and the EDU Pro is going to be the private link. So when you create anything in free or student, it's public, which means anybody can see that link if they're searching for it. Um, with the EDU Pro, you can make a private link so nobody else can use your creation. I work really hard on these uh, homework creations that I make. I don't want anybody else using them. So I really like having that private link in the EDU Pro. The other thing that's a big difference is you can import PowerPoint files. I've not tried this, but if you were previously using PowerPoint presentations for a lesson and you wanna to try to start switching over to Genially to make them interactive, then that is an option you have with the EDU Pro. I don't know how well it works, but it's definitely an option that you have that might save you a little bit of time. So here you can see where the master plan is set apart. It's the brand personalization. Like I said, these are people that have a business. Their business is creating curriculum, so they want to protect their business. So they don't have the watermark from Genially. They have their own logo in there, their own loader icon. So these are things that are needed for a curriculum developer who's selling their curriculum to other teachers. I'm not doing that, so I don't need any brand personalization. Here's that privacy again, having that private password you can add to your creation if you want to. Um, I don't use a password for mine, but I do have the private link that I love to have. The other difference is the templates. This is a big difference between the free and the paid plans. With the free, you just have less templates, pre-made templates that you can choose from. With all the paid plans, you just have more resources and more templates that you can choose from. The other thing that I really like that is different between the student and the EDU Pro are the folders. Let me tell you, if I did not have folders, I would be going crazy because as I create more and more of these um, interactive slides, it's going to be a lot harder to find them. Of course, there's a search feature I could use, but I like everything organized. I need folders, so I have the folders to organize all of my stuff with the EDU Pro. And I think that's the big difference. And of course, 
the price free you're going to be able to use it for free but you have a little bit of those limitations if you're interested in genially i definitely recommend trying it for free because you have pretty much everything you need in that free version to create any of the slides that you want to create so go for it try it out for free and then if you think it's something you're going to use then you can think about upgrading to one of those paid versions so like i said i am using the edu pro edu pro for the folders and for those private links. That's the two things that I wanted and why I went with the EDU Pro as opposed to the student. I would never get the master. There's nothing in there that I personally need. So now that we see the three different plans, let's take a look at what you get. So here is my dashboard, I guess you could call it, my main screen. You can see here are my folders. I'm able to organize by level and then inside each level, I'm able to organize by unit. Since I've only been using this for two or three weeks now, I don't have a whole lot yet, but I'm gradually gaining, gaining more of these and these folders are gonna help me keep everything organized. And then all these under here are slides that I just haven't put in a folder. These are kind of like my template slides, things that I found that I might go back to constantly to pull stuff from. So the way that I'm using it is for homework. So I use the LearnerLink curriculum, so I don't need to create lessons. And LearnerLink does have homework for most of her lessons right now, but there are some students that might need additional homework. Um, also, I use Reading A to Z, so I'm making slides to go along with the Reading A to Z lessons that I do. So I like having this interactive homework that I can send them that they can do at home. And it's more fun than having to just write sentences or do worksheets. So I really, really like using the Genially. Another thing that is wonderful is that it works in China. <laughs> so of course that can change at any moment, but I have tested out probably every interactive homework or work interactive worksheet site that there is. And every single one has a problem in China. I'll have maybe half of my students will work and the other half it won't, or it'll work for a while and then it just stopped working like word wall. <laughs> so I don't have luck with finding things that work for all of my students. And so far, cross my fingers, it has been working for every single student. They're able to open the link, they're able to do the interactive activities, hear the sounds, everything is working for them. The only complaint I got was one parent said, it was slow to open, which I'm not really surprised. So it might be slow to open, but it worked. So I'm super excited about that. So that is the pro of using Genially. The con is you can't see what they do. So when I send them the homework, they're going through the slides, they're answering the questions. I am not able to see how they did. I have no idea if they got them all right, all wrong, or which ones they got wrong. So that is definitely a negative. Um, they are coming out with an interactive uh, quiz type questions that you can add. But from what I have seen, that it only works if you have the master plan. You can send them the questions with any of the plans, but you won't be able to track who answered them and the results unless you have the master plan. And for me, that's not worth $20 a month. So I'm definitely not going to upgrade just to get those interactive questions. So I'm going to show you my templates that I've created. So I keep it very basic. I like just simple activities to practice what we're learning in class. So this is like my template slide that I created to kind of show the different activities I use in my homework. So if I, I'm gonna put it on slideshow mode just so you can see. So I have just my first page that shows what they've been learning. This is the template I like with the little Legos. I think it's cute. So I use it for all of my students for right now. And then this is like if they're doing a reading A to Z lesson, I have this. Or if it's a lesson we're doing um, in our curriculum, then I have this introduction slide that shows the level, unit, and the lesson. And start. I like to have a today you learned, just like a brief overview of what we learned in class before they start doing the questions just to refresh their memory. Sometimes I add audio to the slide so they can hear me saying the words or sentences as well. 
And then my question slides. So I use a lot of clicking. And even though I'm not able to see the results, the thing I like is I can make the interactive activities show them immediately if they got the answer right or wrong. So they get that immediate feedback even though I'm not able to check it myself. So this one, they were supposed to be choosing the O correct O O sound. Um, I can't even remember. I can't read Chinese because I did the translator. So if they click on the correct word, oh, this was incorrect. So they choose the incorrect word. The little not symbol pops up. If they choose on the correct word, the thumbs up. And that's, I keep this consistent with all of my lessons so they know what to expect. I use the thumbs up and the not symbol for all of my slides. And again, they click and the thumbs up or the not symbol pops up. So even though I'm not able to see how they did, they are able to know immediately if they got the answer correct. And then this is another activity that I use a lot, which is the matching activity, dragging activity. So even though this is created in Genially, I'm actually in this one using an outside code because in Genially they have the drag and drop option, but with drag and drop in the Genially tools, it doesn't tell them if they got it correct or incorrect. So I had to use outside code to put into my lesson to have that ability. So if I do, I think it was toy, and then when they drag to the correct place, they get a thumbs up. With this one, it doesn't give them a not symbol. There's no way to show if they got it wrong. But again, if I use the same activities over and over, they're gonna start learning, oh, with this drag and drop, I will get a thumbs up if it's right or nothing when it's wrong. So I drag and then it gives them the thumb up, thumbs up if they got it correct. I really like the drag and drop. And if you're interested in how I made the drag and drop or even the click or any of these activities, let me know and I can make a quick tutorial on how I made them. And then I have another click activity. So just like with clicking of the words, you can have it where you click on the picture and it'll give you immediate feedback if it's correct or incorrect. So I just had this picture pop up over the top, thumbs up if they get it wrong, and I have the sound that, that goes if they get it incorrect or correct. And then this is another just click where you have the words. I like to use boxes so they understand that those are the words I need to click on. So this would be celebrate. And then again, this is just a click and this is done directly with the Genially tools. I didn't need any outside code for clicking. I really like these activities because they're super simple to make and it gives them that quick, immediate feedback. So if they get it correct or incorrect. This is another one that's created with outside code, not the Genially tools. It's this kind of like a matching game or matching activity when they click on the word if they get the wrong match, the not symbol will pop up. If they get the correct match, the boxes will disappear. Wrong. So I really like this one for um, vocabulary. You can do it for lots of different activities. And when they get them all correct, they get the thumbs up. So this is another drag and drop. Again, this is used by with outside code, not the Genially tools where they drag the word to make a sentence, my birthday. And again, if they get it incorrect with the drag and drop, it doesn't tell them anything. They know it's wrong. Once they get it correct, then the thumbs up will pop up for them. And this is just what I use at the end of the different sections. If they're doing just phonics, they get a, just a phonics complete and the one star. And then at the end, they get the homework complete with five stars. And since I have no way to know if they completed an assignment or if they even looked at the link that I sent them, this is my link at the end where I have the little note and I tell them to take a picture of this page to submit for homework. That is my way to know that they at least completed it. But again, the con is 
I have no idea how well they did on the assignment. So this is how I use it with my students. I send it for homework. I don't make my own lessons since I use Learnaling, who also uses Genially, and she has so many different types of activities that she uses. I'm trying to keep my homework simple with just some basic clicking and drag and drop activities. I'm not getting going to do too much other things unless I find something that I think is simple to make and something that is easy for my students to use. I'm all about keeping it simple, and I'm not going to lie, Genially is not a very fast and very simple uh, tool to use, but once you get used to the tools and used to the different templates that are available, it does get faster and easier to make. And so far, my students have really enjoyed using it. It's just different from what they've been doing before with the other homework that I send them, and it's interactive. Students love being able to interact with their homework assignments. If you have any questions about the plan that I chose or how I made any of these activities, if you want me to make a video about a specific activity that you saw, just let me know. Bye everyone.